Monopoly, Cheater's Edition, How to Play. The object of the game is to cheat to get ahead fast and to try to catch other players cheating as you try to collect the most properties and money. The game ends when all the properties have been purchased and each player has made it back to go. Then the player with the most cash wins. There are very specific ways for how you can cheat. All other forms of cheating are not allowed. Lay out the board and give each player $1,500 divided into two 500s, four 100s, 150, 120, and three tens. Players must keep their money spread out in front of themselves and not in a single stack. The rest of the money goes in the bank tray. Put the hotels in the bank tray. Place one hotel on Connecticut Avenue. That hotel is free for whoever buys the property. Shuffle the community and chance decks and place them face down on their spots on the board. Shuffle the cheat cards and place them in the bank tray. Draw five cheat cards and place them face up in the center of the board. Place the title deed cards next to their matching board spaces. Each player picks a token and places it on go. Place the dice and handcuffs near the board. Each player rolls the dice and the player with the highest total goes first, then play proceeds clockwise. Give the first player the bank tray and dice. On your turn, check the face-up cheat cards so you can plan how and when you can get away with a cheat. Roll both dice, then move your pawn exactly that many spaces clockwise around the board. If you roll doubles, then you get to take another turn unless you've rolled doubles three times in a row. In that case, you go to jail and you do not complete your third turn. Once your turn is finished, pass the dice and bank tray to the next player. Once the next player rolls, then your turn is officially over. If you land on an unowned property, pay the bank the amount listed on the board, then collect the title deed and place it in front of you. If you don't have enough money, or you don't want to buy the property, then the property goes up to auction to the highest bidder. The bidding starts at 10 and can increase in increments as little as 10. Whoever wins the auction gets the property and pays the bank. If no player bids, then the property remains with the bank and no one gets it. If you own all the streets in a colored set, then you own a monopoly. Rent is now increased for those properties and you may build hotels. When you land on a property that someone else owns, the owner must ask you for rent. If they do, then you must pay them the proper rent price as indicated on their card based on the condition of the property. If the property owner fails to ask you for rent before the next player rolls the dice, then you do not have to pay them. Some cards refer to a property's face value. The face value is the price listed on the board space unless it has a hotel then the face value is the rent price of that property with a hotel. When you land on or pass go, you collect $200 from the bank. When you land on chance or community chess, draw the top card from the respective pile, and if it says to do something immediately, then you read it aloud and you follow the instructions. Otherwise, you may hold on to the card until you're ready to use it later. You may only have one chance, and one community chess card at a time. If you draw a new one, you will need to either play or discard one of them to the bottom of the deck. Railroads are not for sale. If you land on a railroad, then you move to the next railroad space and end your turn. If you land on free parking, you draw either a chance or community chess card. If you land on go to jail, then you move your token immediately to jail you do not pass go and collect $200. Put the handcuff on and place its base underneath the board near your seat. Your turn is over, but you may still collect rent, bid on auctions, buy hotels, and trade while you're in jail. You may also catch cheaters and cheat, but you may not play chance or community chess cards except for the ones that get you out of jail. If someone is already in jail when you go to jail, then they are released to the just visiting spot and you are given the handcuff. There may only be one player in jail at a time. To get out of jail, you may pay $50 at the start of your turn, then roll and move like normal. 
Or, instead of paying, you may use a get out of jail free card. Or you can roll doubles. If you do, move your token that many spaces and end your turn. If you fail to roll doubles by your third turn in jail, then you must pay the $50 and move based on your last roll. The final option to get out of jail is to cheat. So how do you cheat? Each cheat card has a title and an action. Throughout the game, you may only cheat by doing the face-up cheats on the board. You are allowed to use distractions, bluffing, and sleight of hand. You may cheat on your turn or on another player's turn. When you're ready to cheat, secretly do what's on a cheat card. Then, you must wait until the next player rolls the dice. If no other player catches you before then, you got away with the cheat. Let everyone else know you succeeded and how. Flip over the cheat card and collect the reward listed on the back. Then return that cheat card to the bottom of the cheat deck and draw a new one to the board. When you think someone else cheated, call out cheater and how they cheated before the next player rolls the dice. If the accused player is guilty, then they must take the penalty listed on the back of the cheat card. But if you falsely accuse someone of cheating and they prove that they are innocent, then you must pay that player $100. If you can't prove your innocence, then the other players listen to your argument and then decide who deserves the penalty. Once you have completed a colored set, you can start buying hotels for that set. There are no houses, you buy straight to hotels. You do not have to wait for your turn before you can buy. Pay the hotel cost listed on the card and place a hotel on that space. You can only have one hotel per property and you may not sell hotels to the bank or other players. If a property owned by the bank has a hotel on it, then you pay the normal price and get the hotel for free. If multiple players want to buy the last hotel, then the hotel is auctioned. You can buy, sell, or swap properties with other players at any time. Properties can be traded for cash, other properties, and or get out of jail free cards. The amount is decided by the players making the deal. If you run out of money and can't pay someone, then you will need to sell properties to the bank for the face value or to another player for an agreed upon price. If you cannot raise enough money to pay off a debt, then you are bankrupt and you are out of the game. Give the player you owe all the cards you have left. If you owe the bank the money, then all of your properties are auctioned off. The game ends when all the properties have been purchased. Then each player continues around the board until they reach go. Then they must stop and collect $200, even if their roll would have taken them further. Then in turn order, each player collects rent from the bank for each of their properties, making sure to get double rent or hotel prices for the correct properties. Then the player with the most cash wins.